first thing I've done here is I've split the log into six uh, pieces and just numbered them there as well so that when we're doing the whittling and take them apart we know which order they go back in with now this log is slightly bigger than what you really want to work with with children um, I've just done it bigger so it's easier to pick up on camera but what you really want so instead of a piece that big you want a piece that big so the size of the log is really going to be about from your maybe thumb to your finger maybe slightly uh, larger but nothing too much larger than that you can see that I can't fit my thumb and finger around this one so this is too big for children to use um, so if you imagine one slightly smaller where my fingers can touch then that's going to be the perfect size so we're going to start off by taking our first piece and all we're going to do is we are going to take away this section here okay so we're going to take away all this section this is going to take us back to the ears from where the snout is going to be so you're just going to whittle back this section and all i'm going to do is just a series of push cuts so i'm in control of the knife just using my finger sorry using my thumb to push back Now you might be able to hear, but I've chosen quite a dry uh, log for this, which isn't the best. Um, green wood is the best for whittling, especially with with uh, children. So don't think because I've used this dry piece, it's just one that I had lying around that was the right size. But even with the dry dry piece, it's not it's not too much effort. But yeah, for children, you want. A, um, a greener piece of wood. Okay, so you can see I've taken that. So it slopes down from where the ridge of the ears are, or will be, to the point of the nose. Okay, so the next bit is we are going to create the shape of the ears by taking a section out of the center here and all we're going to do is create a V going down from one ear to the other. So we're taking away this section. Okay. And it's going to create that V shape. Again, I'm just going to use some push cuts just to start off with. Ever so just going to gently go from one side to the other. Now, as far as skill wise, the skill level, I would say this is going to be maybe the trickiest part of the video, especially for whereas fine motor skills are concerned and uh, dexterity. So this might be something you want to do beforehand, depending on the age of the children just to get them started off or even sawing a stop cut in can help so I'm just going to put a little stop cut in there so I'm just pushing the blade pressing the blade in so it creates a cut and there then the knife isn't going to go past that cut so I'm not going to go too far so like I said you could do that with a saw beforehand if you wanted to but depending on the age of your children might be able to do this fine like I said I did this with um, a group of year four children so age around eight to nine and they were fine with this you can see we've got that shape there already and I could refine it if I wanted to once you've actually got the indent it's a lot easier to take away material You see from the back of the V, so it's not very deep, it's just enough to make that shape. Okay, and to get the point on the ears, we're just going to go from each side and we're going to go in. So, again, 
push cut. Just using my thumb there, taking off the material to get more of a point on top for the ears. Or not take too much off at once because the whole ear might come off. So the next step is I'm just going to mark where I want my neck to go up to. So if this is my if this is my snout, I'm gonna go to about there. I can always bring it further up if I wanted to, so I'm gonna mark this out on both sides. And all I'm going to do now is take some material away from below the neck. And the best way to do this is with stop cuts. So I've just got my blade on that line. I'm just going to push in, not too hard, just enough to go in and make a cut up to that stop cut. You see the material comes out. And I do, do the same thing again. Push the blade in, remove the material. And if you need to do it again to get that out, you can do. Okay, so I'm going to do that along that line, push the blade in, take up the material to it. Again, the softer the wood, the easier this is, so pop your stop cut in. And carve up to that line. And all the stop cut's doing is just making sure that you're not, as you're removing that material, not going up into the fox's head and accidentally taking off the snout or a bit of his head. So I'm gonna, and actually at this point I'm going to take away this ridge because it's digging into my hand a bit. So I'm just going to take that ridge off. It'd be easy to hold that now. So now I'm just going to go along, along and clean up some of these edges. I've made my snout slightly too big, so I'm just going to take some more material off from there. Just to bring it down to more of a, a point. But it, depending on what animal you're doing, you might want to keep the snout a bit bigger. And this is a good thing about this. Um, these kind of steps. They work for a lot of animals, as I'll show you in a second. Once you uh, get the general shape, shapes down, how to create ears, how to create a nose, etc. You can uh, create a lot of animals. Okay, so here you can see the rough profile of the nose, the ears, and just taking away the neck. So those are the um, the only steps that you need for the carving. The rest is the decorating, and that's where the animal comes into. This could be any animal at this point, but with the decoration, that's what makes this an easier carving project for younger children, as it doesn't rely too much on uh, finessing carving skills. So I'm just going to go ahead and decorate this fox with a black pen to begin with. Okay, so for the fox, we have just coloured in a black snout, two black eyes, and then we've just coloured in his um, the top of his ears. Now, the next bit for the fox, which I actually don't have the colour for, but I'll show you one that's was been made at another point. So this is using a smaller stick. All they've done is they've just, with an orange um, paint or felt tip, just colored in the face you can leave some white sections for the ears like you can see up in this one or on the cheeks okay and then you've got some of the orange on the neck and that's it that's what that's the end, end product so we've taken away the top section from the nose to the ears we've 
created a V in the centre between the ears and we've pointed them and then we've taken away the neck underneath the chin and then all we've done is decorated it to make it look more like a fox. So like I said you can do this with any animal really but these are the two examples. So we've got a hare slash rabbit so you can see the difference here is that instead of bringing that snout to a point we've just rounded it off there. We've still got the lead up from the nose to the ears However, this V cut has become deeper and we've made the ears thinner on the sides. Same with the neck though, the neck's still the same, we're just leading up to it, but we'll round it off. And then if we look at the badger, okay, again, the same neck, slightly thicker neck, um, less pointy snout, but there's still a snout there. And the ears, instead of coming to a point, they're just rounded off at the top as well but as you can see it all comes together with the decoration and that's the part that the children really love doing is decorating their animals afterwards once they're all in together you can see that this one that we've done earlier and then these star these ones that have started once they all go together they all face in with each other and if you imagine the other three connected to these okay you can see they all face in and I think the actual title for this is creating a skulker fox. I think that's the um, the group name for foxes. But like I said, it could be for any animal. You can just make a group of animals all facing him. And then you can connect them with string or wire just to keep them together. But yeah, there you go. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment uh, and I'll help you out as best as I can. Uh, but I hope that tutorial has been easy to follow. Like I said, it is quite easy for them to do. It just takes a bit of patience and a bit of time for them to control their fine motor skills a bit more than it does for adults. So I hope you like that video. If you do have any questions, um, you can pop them in the comments and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. And I'll see you for the next video.